Hi, I'm Life Coach Sean Griffiths, and I'm going to show you a video in a minute. Why it matters is that if you suffer from any kind of anger issues, maybe at work or at home, uh, anxiety, or maybe even fear of flying, or any other emotion which comes up and takes over, then I've got some great tips for you. So please do watch this video. And if you enjoy it at the end, please click like and subscribe. Thank you. Today, I'd like to talk to you about processing emotions. I'm going to tell you my story. Look at one of your stories and take a reading. Go to the beach. Four ways we deal with emotions, how we practice processing emotions, and finally check it in how you may have changed. But first, I want to tell you a story. My partner and I were on holiday two years ago. We'd flown to Verona and we're going to have a little car touring holiday of northern Italy, ending up in Milan. I'd been traveling with work, so she'd arranged everything. Well, to cut a long story short, when we arrived at the car hire place in Verona, it turned out she'd forgotten to actually book a car. I had an almost irrational surge of annoyance and quite a bit of anger come up at that point and lots of thoughts about how she should have double checked everything. I kept it bottled up while we solved the problem and I resisted the anger. I was trying to be reasonable and logical. We finally found a car, but we ended up in a tiny smart car, an underpowered car, two-seater car, going over the Italian mountains. Of course, once we were in the car on our way, I couldn't hold it in anymore, and I blew up quite irrationally so. In fact, I ended up apologizing later. Can you think of a situation where something like that happened to you? You tried to control your anger, or you tried to hold down anxiety, but you ended up more anxious or any other emotion which didn't end up serving you. Have a think about it, something recently or something further back. Pause the video here if you need more time to think of something. Now I'd like to take a measurement. It would be great if you could write it down somewhere, mark down how you feel about the situation in that situation you thought of on a scale of one to 10, where one was your emotion didn't cause a problem and 10, it was a real problem for you. Now, I want to show you how you can help yourself deal with that emotion in a way that serves you better. I really didn't want that result in Italy. However, now I've spent time coaching and teaching on processing emotions, I can deal with the situation in a very different way. And over the next few minutes, I'll show you how. So let's experiment together again. Just close your eyes for a moment and I'll tell you when to open them again. Imagine you're barefoot on a beach in the warm late afternoon sunshine. You're standing with your feet in the gently lapping surf. Imagine the feel of the waves and of the sand under your feet as the wavelets wash in and out. Now imagine these are emotions lapping in and out, just coming and going. You just feel them and don't react. Just watch them. Now think back to that situation you were thinking about a few minutes ago, that story of yours, and see if you can get that feeling to come up again. Remember how you felt. Concentrate on that moment you felt the emotion. No problem if you can't, but if you can, feel it. Look in your body, let it just sit there and be. No judgment, just feel it. If it's a lot for you, then just take one big deep breath and then release it in a big sigh and relax out of the process. But if it's not too much, then just look with curiosity at the physical effect in your body. Think again of the situation and feel the feeling. Maybe your heart rate is increased or your breathing is a little different or your muscles are tense. This very act of observing your emotion is what processing or allowing emotions is. Where is it sitting in your body? Is it in your neck, in your chest or stomach? Is it hard or soft? Is it moving from one place to another? Just let it be. Let it sit in your body and observe it, casting no judgment of whether it should or shouldn't be there. Observe how it shows up in your body. It's just a small physical change in your body, vibrations in your body. Recognize it can't hurt you. Make friends with that emotion, say hello to it. 
Okay. So slowly open your eyes now and we'll continue with the ways we all deal with emotions. Okay. So there are four ways we can deal with an emotion. We can give in to it. Have you ever raised your voice or shouted when you felt angry? From an emotion, we sometimes take action which doesn't always serve us. Or secondly, can, we can avoid it. Have you ever felt sad or down and then reached for a glass of wine to make you feel a different feeling? We think this will help and it may in the short term, but it may cause more problems in the long run. And thirdly, we can resist it. And this is what I was doing in Italy when I was trying not to be angry. Imagine now we're in a swimming pool, maybe in a hotel near that beach, and we're trying to hold a beach ball under the water. This is what resisting an emotion is like. We hold our emotion down through sheer willpower, but eventually our arms get tired. We can't hold it forever. We, when we let go, the ball bounces up out of the water violently. This often comes up with anxiety. We're not actually feeling the anxiety, but we're trying to resist it until sometimes we have a panic attack as all that pressure is suddenly released. This is often the case with fear of flying. As well as a life coach, I'm an airline pilot, and I've met so many people who are afraid of flying. They would come to the flight deck before the flight, and I'd chat to them about all the safety systems. From CEOs of big companies and businessmen to families going to see their loved ones or holiday makers. However, now I'm a life coach, I recognize a different way to coach this subject, processing emotions. Many people are trying to resist the anxiety and push it down until maybe when the door of the plane closes or when in turbulence, you can't hold it down anymore and it rushes up, maybe in a panic attack. By allowing the anxiety to be there, it never reaches that pressure cooker level, which is caused by trying to resist it. Now, I do coach on fear of flying. So if you're interested in exploring your fear, just book a one on one mini session with me. And finally, fourthly, we can allow the emotion and process it. This is what I'm suggesting may serve you better. You can allow the emotion to sit in your body without reacting to it, as we've done already. So what does allowing emotions look like? Well, as I say, you've seen it in action. When we feel the emotion coming, we recognize it. We don't judge it. We're only human after all. However, just pause at that point and short circuit your normal practiced reaction. Look at it in your body with curiosity. A feeling is just a vibration in the body. Say hello to it. Treat it as an old friend just come to visit. How do we practice it? Now, we do need to practice allowing emotions because they often come up really quickly in real life. And at first we get caught up in the old habits and ways of dealing with them. There is nothing wrong. We need to learn a new technique which requires practice and time. We can practice in quiet moments with nothing going on when we're on a walk or have a few moments free. Just bring to mind a situation where you felt the emotion and try to recreate that situation in your mind and then look in your body for that feeling. Eventually, by sitting with the emotion, we may see it reduce or drift away like a beach ball in the surface of a pool. I've now made friends with my emotions and can recognize them for what they are, just a vibration in the body. Anger, anxiety, nerves, and a whole range of emotions can't hurt or kill me. They're just vibrations. Because I now recognize, for example, anger in the moment after practicing it, processing it, I feel it coming, not always. I'm only human. I can short circuit it, press pause before I act by giving myself a few seconds to feel it. And then I take a deep breath and it reduces. It may start to flow out of my body like that beach ball bobbing away. It may not drift away. However, I can see it for what it is, just a vibration in my body. Even if I think I'm justified in my anger, I've given myself time to think about it. And possibly I recognize it may not serve me. That reaction to anger by shouting may just make me feel better in the moment. But in the long run, I know most times it doesn't serve me. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. And when I recognize I have a choice of how to deal with the emotion, well, suddenly I'm not so angry anymore. Another story. Have you ever had this sort of thing happen on the phone? A few days ago, I was on the phone to a roofing contractor who'd been looking at my leak in my roof. He'd not turned up the previous day. And as we spoke on the phone, I started feeling a little anger in me. I just paused. 
felt the anger rising in my body. I recognized how it felt as just a vibration, then took a deep breath. And instead of getting short or raising my voice, I decided that anger wouldn't serve me and let it just float away. I could have got angry, but that would just serve me in the short term and make me feel better in the short term. The guy would not, it wouldn't change him at all. The actual result was there was no huge drama. I didn't find my blood pressure spiking or have to regret later falling out with the person. Anger would have only caused me negative effects in the end anyway. We found a solution to the problem and I finished the call for a story that wasn't very dramatic, but for real life, I was happy with the results. This will work with other emotions as well as anger. I just mentioned anger because it was my story. So in summary, try allowing and processing your emotions with curiosity and no judgment by feeling it in your body. Be that watcher of the waves on the beach. Now, do you now think you might have a tool in your locker to help you with that emotion from the situation you thought of before in a similar situation in the future? Now you've listened to this session. Do you think you'd react in a different way now? We'll use the same scale of one to 10 to take a measurement again, where 10 means it could be a huge problem for you. Write it down if you can. Now look at the number from before we started the session. Did that number go down at all? Even one number down is something to be celebrated in just a eight minute video. I'd suggest having a go at processing emotions to the exercise. Just try it. If you feel like you'd like to explore this topic more, have a guide of practices of processing your emotion or look at how this can help your specific situation, then just book a mini one on one session with me. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you.